Hi Wine Press, how are you doing today? It's my great honor today to bring um, to you a good friend of ours, Pastor Marion Mill. Marion has been a missionary um, to, in Fiji for the last 40 years and she's been doing amazing things and established a school there and impacting the islands around Fiji. Buckle in guys, she's got something great to say. Bless you, see you in a minute. Hello, Wine Press. It's great to be here today. I um, have known uh, Pastor Arthur and Daniel for quite a while, and uh, I'm just thrilled to be able to speak to you today. Uh, I just want to read a scripture over in Matthew chapter 28. It says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority, I want to emphasize that, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Then this authority is in enabling us to do what was in 19 of this portion of scripture. It says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. And I love that portion of scripture. This is the commission. This is the purpose of the church, is to impart unto others what we have received from Jesus Christ, that we have received his love, his mercy and everything from him. But God is asking us to make disciples of all nations. So I believe every body, everyone in the body of Christ is called to do what that commission has required of us to do. We have the equipment. We have the authority from God. God has given everything that's needed to get the stuff done. And every single member of the body of Christ has a ministry to fulfill that calling. And as we're in community and as we're fellowshipping and as we're moving together as a church worldwide, we can see that great commission come to pass because it's on God's heart for this to happen. Our part is to ask God, Lord, what do you require of me? What is the call of God that you have placed on my life? And you know, sometimes we, we just come to church, go back, come to church, go back. But I believe we need to be radical in this generation because we're in radical times. I think the shaking that's been going on in the world is unprecedented in any time because it's a global thing that's happening. There's shattered lives, shattered people, shattered families. God is wanting to restore them. And one of the greatest impacts the ministry of Jesus Christ had on individuals was he would say unto them, be made whole. And the only way a person can truly be made whole is by being in fellowship and communion with their creator. And God can set in order all the broken bits, pull them back together again, re-establish a person's life, restoration, regeneration of their life. So God is looking for people who will be his hands, be his feet, and go out into the harvest and begin to wait on God, begin to seek God and allow him to direct them. And you know, God might call you if you're game enough to say, Lord, what do you want me to do? God might call you into the DeFi um, space in the networks that are coming up now. He may call you into business. He may call you um, to feed the poor. He may do a million things that is an expression of Jesus Christ on this earth that can reach a lost generation. But we need to ask him. And I will say another thing. Once you ask him and you hear something, you think, wow, is that God or is that me? I believe the Bible says that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. If God is big enough to give you a word once, Ask him to give it two or three times to confirm that is what God requires of you to do. And then move in. Begin to allow him 
to fulfill the call of God, whatever it is. The call of God might be to clean the toilets in the church. We're all a team. We're all part of the body of Christ. Every single function is so important to get the job done. Now, over in Luke, (coughs) chapter 9, verse 1, this is when Jesus sent out the 12, says he sent out the 12 and called the 12 disciples together and gave them two things, power and authority over all, that word all comes up again, all demons and to cure diseases. God has given us everything that we need to get the job done. (coughs) There's nothing that we need other than his power, his authority, and he will bring about all the odds and ends that come after that. And I like to use this illustration as like a policeman. A policeman has the authority from the government to administer law, to um, uphold the law. They have a uh, uniform, they have a badge, and that's the sign of the authority that they have been given. But we need more than just the authority. We need more than just the power, that authority that's been given. And in our case, by God, we need the power. And, you know, I live in Fiji and I live on a hill and there's a police barracks right on my hill. And in that police barracks uh, is always a policeman. And one day a lady came home and she um, was in the house, her house, and she brought her boyfriend home. And her husband unexpectedly came home. So this man was very angry with his wife and she ran down the hill thinking she would get to safety in the police barracks. She ran inside the police barracks with a very angry, very big Fijian man following her. Inside the police barracks was an officer of the law. And this officer was a very small uh, constable, an Indian constable. And this big Fijian man came in. Now, he had the authority to administer the law, but he didn't have the power. And as soon as the big man came in, he ran out the back door. And the lady actually got bashed in the police barracks. Now, if he had had the gun and said, halt, in the name of the law, you halt, I'm sure everything would have been over. So we need not only the authority, but we need the power to back it up. How do we get the power to fulfil our ministry? It's only through the source of all power, which is only him. That's why he went away and he said, I will send unto you the comforter. I will send to you the Holy Spirit. And we know on the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the dunamis of God. That word is so powerful. That's where we get our dynamite from. (laughs) So they had dynamite in the spirit. They had the power, the absolute authority of heaven. And you know that authority in heaven would enable them to get the job done. And so we need not only the authority given by God for the call, but the power to back it up and to do everything that God's called us to do. And they had power, all demons and all diseases. And over in Acts 1.8, it says about it, And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem was the town or the city where they lived. That's in our terms, that's our Melbourne here. And in Judea, Judea was like the state in which the region where they lived. And that's like Victoria And Samaria, that's like Australia, the country, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So there's nothing 
no place that's not covered by this power that was given to God, from God to us to be his witnesses, to be his hands and feet upon this earth. And over in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, and I often think <clears throat> so many Christians are saying, come Lord Jesus, come. I think God is saying unto the church, you guys get out and do the stuff, then I'll come. It says, and his gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. Wow, as a witness to all nations, then the end will come. So the gospel has to be preached. Who's going to preach it? You know, how do you preach the gospel? You know, the Bible also says that we are epistles read and known of all men. Even our lifestyle, our care, our love that we have for human beings is a way for us to preach the gospel. So we have to be people that have in our heart the most important thing on our life is to do the will of him who has sent us. That was Jesus' most important function was to do what the Father had required of him. And I believe that same uh, desire God's wanting to put inside us, each one of us, to do what he has required of us to do. Now, over in Matthew chapter 14, we find an illustration of um, two different sorts of Christians. And in uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse 25, we find <coughs> Jesus is there and he begins to come walking on the water and all the disciples are in a boat. And you can imagine if you see someone walking across a lake, you would be shocked. And he, he just turned to them and says, be of good cheer, it's I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered and said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So <clears throat> his desire was to be where Jesus was. Jesus was out of the boat, on the water, and Peter said, let me come. I want to do the same things that you're doing. So he got out of the boat. And Jesus said to him, come. <clears throat> and when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to Jesus. But when he saw that the winds were boisterous, he was afraid. And I tell you something, any time that we go out of the boat, out of our comfort zone, out of our place of safety, we will always find there will be opposition. When you want to uh, get hungry for God and fulfill the call of God on your life, there will be great opposition because we have an adversary who does not want you to fulfill that call. He knows greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And what's in us frightens him. So the opposition will come. So this opposition came. <coughs> but then it says, but when he saw that the winds were boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out to the Lord, save me. Now I just want to point out here, it does not say Peter sunk. I know if I tried to walk on the water, I would go straight to the bottom. But he did not sink. It says he began to sink. And he knew where to cry out. He cried out, Lord. And Jesus gently picked him up. And it says, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him said to him, oh, you of little faith. And I don't think it was slap, 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 oh, you of little faith. I think it was, oh, Peter, you of little faith. Why, didn't you, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the winds ceased. So the two of them went to the boat. My question is, did they breaststroke to the boat? No, I believe both of them walked on the water to the boat. So we have to be people 
today who are out of the boat type Christians, who are prepared to do things that are so different or radical to what we've ever known before, be open for God to impress on us uh, a way to spread the gospel that maybe no one else has ever done or a, a particular task that he would like us to do. And I just want to testify today. I've heard so many people say, I am not qualified to do what God's called me to do. And I would say nobody that's ever been in ministry has ever been qualified. And I'm a prime example of that. I just want to give a bit of a testimony today. Uh, my name is Marion Mayle from Murrabit. <laughs> Murrabit is a small place on the Murray River, not far from Swan Hill. It's a place where not many people want to go. And I couldn't read and write when I left school. But when I was seven years of age, um, I, when I was young, I always, and now it hasn't left me, I've always had such a hunger to know about God. I wanted to know about God. And I was talking to my mother <clears throat> and I was asking a lot of questions about God. So we ended up, I prayed and asked Jesus to come into my life. Um, and as I began to pray and ask Jesus to come into my life, a strange thing began to happen. It was like a video was playing in my head. I saw a woman. It was like I was sitting back in a big shed and I saw a woman preaching and I saw all these dark people listening. And God spoke to me and said, one day you are going to be a missionary. And I told my mother right there and then. I said, Mum, I'm going to be a missionary. And my mother said, oh, that's nice. <laughs> as you do, and, but the call of God came on my life there. Now, it may not be the same for you, it may not be the same way it comes, but either way, God will make sure that there is a call of God that will be revealed to you and shown to you and the path that you are to go on. And I, um, I grew up in the bush in Australia. I um, I learned how to drive bulldozers and tractors and all manner of things. And God was calling me to the islands. And finally, I got to the islands. I, um, I got a job first off. I became the first woman textile mechanic in Australia, even though I couldn't read and write. And I sat there with a the Bible one day and I said, Lord, I cannot go through life like this, not reading, not writing. And he just, he just really ministered to me. And things started to happen. I started to understand English. I didn't realise at the time, but I was actually dyslexic. So God, I was the most unqualified. We run a training centre today, a vocational school, a primary school, a junior secondary school. We run a church. I am the lead pastor of the church. All of the things that... I am doing, in the natural, I'm not qualified. If I had to do a resume or an advertisement in the paper asking for someone to fulfil this particular uh, position, I would not put anything that I have done to fulfil that position. But God is not after people who have great abilities. You know, in the uh, New Testament church, you know, Peter and James and John were ignorant and unlearned men, but they recognised that they had been with Jesus. Very interesting. And, you know, God isn't after our ability. We've heard so many times he's after our availability. And as we're available, God will, even despite us, he will do what he said he will do because he is God. And I think many times we forget God is God. And God has a call, God has a plan, and he wants to fulfill it in every single member of the body of Christ. Our part is to be so open and, and almost be radical. You know, when that illustration of Jesus walking on the water, I've heard so many people and so many preachers criticising Peter. 
Peter gets out of the boat. Sure, he had a bit of fear and he looked around and the wind came and a wave smashed on him and he took his eyes off Jesus for a moment. But as soon as he realised he was starting to go down, he cried out to Jesus, he lifted him up and then they walked to the boat. That's my interpretation together. Because, you know, we cannot do anything that God has called us to without the power and authority that's given by him. If we do it in our own strength, our own ability, it will never, ever last. What God begins, God will finish. So I went on to the mission field and we've set up a training centre in the most hardest part of Fiji ever to set up a training centre. And yet God has done it, despite me. And I just want to encourage you today just to step out of the boat. Don't be like the ones that stayed in the boat watching what was happening. Ask God, what do you want me to do? And be prepared to do anything he asks of us to do. And I know God will speak to our heart. He will instruct us and show us what we are to do. And, you know, I just look back and sometimes I laugh. I just laugh at what God has done in Fiji. You know, I've got a desire on my heart to impact 22,000 islands of the South Seas. And the South Pacific just calls and calls. And I know the various students that have been raised up under our ministry or God, what God has imparted unto them are going to go into many places and cause a fire of God to sweep through the islands with many other people as well. All we have to do is find our part in God, give ourselves to him totally and be open for his direction. So thank you very much today. It's been a pleasure to speak to you all and uh, God bless you all. Wasn't that fantastic? We are so blessed to have friends like Marion around the world here at Wine Press. Pastor Bruce last week, Marion this week, and who knows who's to come. Might even be me, who knows, but praise God. Thanks for joining with us today. Trust God is speaking to your hearts, and I really encourage you to respond with all your heart to what God is calling you to be and to do. In Jesus' name, love you, church. <laughs>